Earth, we have a problem. Our oxygen is being stolen and our air polluted with toxic fumes. And it's all down to transport. So what does a marine biologist do about this problem when he's pondering the state of our planet? Well, he has an ACE idea. Australian Clean Energy Electric Vehicle. It's an ACE EV. There is more to this story than just the feel-good energy solutions. It's also about Australian manufacturing and jobs and the fact that you can charge your tools straight from your car. Let me give you a number. $32.5 billion. That's how much the automotive manufacturing industry received in assistance from the Australian government during 1997 and 2017. That's 6,600 for every car made in that period. Now, as of 2020, the car manufacturing industry in Australia has been declared dead. Until now. Joining SME TV today is Greg McGarvey, MD of Ace Electric Vehicle Group. Welcome, Greg. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Brilliant. Here in Queensland, nice sunshine. Yes. Um, well, we, we won't mention your borders. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just stick to the show for the moment. Now, other people have said about, um, about ACE and where you're going with the EV market, the electric vehicles, other people have said it's going to take a miracle. You say it just takes a marketing plan. It does. And uh, part of the miracle that we have are our partners out of Germany and Taiwan and the very clever technology they bring to the table, which is 100% composite. For us, uh, we set great advantages in that. Uh, it's one third the energy input to build the vehicle, equivalent to a, uh, similar vehicles. And the other beauty of it is it's very light. You know, our cargo, our van is only a thousand kilo. So when you combine lightness and low cost, you have an affordable business on wheels, which is what we have. And um, I was flown overseas by Asia Development Bank a number of years ago to share our story uh, in Europe. And I said, why Australia? And they said, well, the Australian brand carries a 20 or 30% premium, um, just in quality and recognition. And, and the trust, it's a trust factor of a premium brand, the Australian brand, isn't it? It is, truly is. And you know, Australia does have a very high level of trust globally, a high level of respect. Sometimes you wonder why, but it does. And No, no, we, we have to agree with it. Um, <coughs> without being facetious and cheeky, are you the IKEA of cars? No, no, we don't want to be labelled too closely to IKEA. Uh, they've got flat packs. What we have is a smart pack. And the whole intent behind the smart pack is that uh, we build that and export it from our facility in South Australia. And it's going to our target countries. We're already in discussions with a number of countries. Our focus is um, not to try and sell to China. It's not to try and sell to India. Uh, we're looking at smaller countries that would love to have their own auto industry. Uh, what we can do is provide them with the equivalent of a pop-up auto industry that creates local jobs. They take our smart packs, assemble them. Uh, and the big advantage, of course, is they're building their own vehicles. Most likely they're going to buy their own vehicles rather than importing vehicles. But the other great benefit is that they're um, not importing fossil fuels and they're cleaning up their cities. You know what it was like with COVID. No cars That's around. That's right. Blue but, yeah. It's the first time in, in history that we've been able to actually see differences that, that normally would just be photoshopped in and out of things. Um, you, you've touched a little bit on the journey. You've, you're a small team, right? Because if we, I'm not going to call you a startup anymore because I don't, I don't believe you're at that place, especially since you're pretty much ready to launch. But this small team got together, you know, you've, you've had no backing from the Australian government. Correct up until very recently. So tell us, tell us about the team itself. Look, we're, we're very fortunate and the team is driven uh, by looking out for the future for their grandchildren. Uh, we've got a global team and I can tell you they're, they're the cleverest people on the globe working with us. They see the vision and they say, Greg, when you do make money, you need to pay us back, but uh, they're, they're willing to take that risk. And that's how we've managed Angela, to get to the state we're at now uh, after five years of hard work. And uh, the great benefit we had out of this was Rex Patrick, Senator Rex Patrick. He um, saw me doing my presentation at the Senate Inquiry into Electric Vehicles a number of years ago and been tracking us since. And he said, let me test drive the car. So he did. And his work, his hard work actually uh, convinced the government to put up the money to help us run this energy management trial. 
And this is a critical trial. It's going to have global impact because it hasn't been done before. And our, our partners out of the UK who um, work in grid services have said it should have been done years ago, but we'll support it. So what, what are you hoping that this trial will deliver in, in terms of data? Uh, lots of data. Um, effectively, people that take on our uh, fleet during the trial will have data about the uh, operation of the vehicle. Uh, they also, part of the requirement of the trial is they put our geotab technology uh, into their own fossil fuel vehicles. So even at the end of the day, they say, no, we don't like electric vehicles. They have the data there to run their own fossil fuel fleet more effectively and with less cost. But so they, they, there's, there's, a, there's a value add there for actually participating in the trial? Correct, yes. And, um, but you, you, you're very confident that this trial will show such savings. I mean, you, you guys consciously started with a commercial vehicle. You weren't trying to compete in the sedan market initially. It was all about commercial vehicles, light vehicles for, you know, carers, for tradies, all those kind of um, industries or tradespeople. Uh, and I was very facetious in the beginning or a bit cheeky and I said, you know, you, you'll actually be able to charge your tools if you're a tradie from the car. But that, that is what you can do. That's correct. Yeah, no, that's part of the um, benefit of our vehicle. Um, tradies, when they you go... Chose, you, you chose to go the commercial vehicle route. You do have um, a, a cute little car that's not commercial. Yep. And, and you're going to have a sports car. Yes, we've got a sports car coming 2022. And yep. then we've got another series of vehicles called the Transformers. Uh, and when they actually hit the market, they'll, um, they'll blow the whole place apart because it's well, very... Greg, I've, I mean, we're going to show some pictures of the vehicles um, throughout this interview. But as I've said to you before, they're really smart looking, particularly the interiors. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, we've got German design. The, the original vehicle, as you know, is, is, is genetics go back to the smart car. That's and, right. Uh, and it's had Swiss designers in the in the space, German designers, and you know clever Taiwanese technology. So we've got great partners, and it's just a it's a lay down for Australia. It's such a great opportunity. Australia can become the global hub for our technology and for our um, energy management solutions. So how long has this taken, Greg? From the from the time you sat around and and was was dreaming this this vision of yours. To, to today, how long has this been for you? Over five years. And five years. You're a very patient man. You have to be. You've got to be pretty persistent and determined as well and, and optimistic. Otherwise, you know, because there's been plenty of hurdles and, um, you know, if this doesn't work, I've got a memorial seat to my wife um, in uh, Harvey Bay. I just take a sleeping bag and end up there. But we're very confident we've got something that's going to be brilliant for Australia. So apart from um, changing the world, um, with research and development, when you were doing the R&D, uh, is it the backers that funded the project and, and continue to, obviously? Well, it's been uh, in-kind funding, you could say, uh, and I've put all, all my resources into it. That's why I said I've, you know, I've exhausted all those. And uh, the fact that Rex Patrick has secured that $5 million off the federal government is really an opportunity for us to demonstrate just how good this is for Australia. And the energy markets are quite keen on this on what we're doing because it is a solution for them. Um, and there's, there's now, so some, many... of, some of those things that people are very conscious of with electric vehicles is that, oh, they can't go very far without needing to be charged. But you've solved that problem. Well, look, the, the, it's a headspace thing, I think, more than anything, Angela. Uh, how often a week do you fill your car up? I'm not a good example because I walk... <laughs> I walk everywhere, but in my in my old normal routine, I'd I'd probably have to fill up the car every two weeks. Okay, well, uh, with the VV, it fills up every night at home. You don't have to go hunting for a petrol station every two weeks. And the other advantage is, of course, if you divide that two weeks with a petrol tank, it tells you that probably you're only doing 38 kilometres a day, which is the the global average for vehicle use. So the the range anxiety the vehicle cost, the need for charge stations is really a, a bit of a myth that's being perpetuated by people that don't want to see the uptake too quickly. So you don't need a special charging station put into your home if you have a, if you have a vehicle? Currently you do, but uh, right. what we're creating with our trial uh, in the future is it'll be just like a mobile phone. 
uh, smartphone on wheels uh, with a very large battery. You get home at night, plug it in, have your dinner. And probably by the time you've eaten your dinner, it's fully charged because you haven't driven much anyway. Um, but, it'll, uh, it'll end up, the, um, the car in the garage will end up being the actual charge hub, I reckon. Everyone will be putting all the devices into the car because it'll just all <laughs> charge together and, you, and you'll know where everything is. I also well, noticed, um, just going through a lot of your material, um, yes. that you're following in, in Tesla's business blueprint. You, you're taking all the online ordering. Yeah, we think that's the simplest way to do it. And uh, we've got a sort of a, a, a try, and, try and buy or buy and try so that you know, if after um, 30 days of use, you say, no, this is not for me, you can hand it back. But we're, un we're pretty sure people won't because once you get in and drive an electric vehicle, and you need to do it, Angel, you've got to get in, go down and see your local Tesla dealer and say, can I have a test drive? You'll just understand just how brilliant it is compared to driving a traditional I'm a old Okay. I'm a little bit worried, Greg. If I get into the Tesla, I might want it. <laughs> and I'm well, and I'm waiting for the Ace sports car in 2022. Okay, well we'll keep one aside for you. What colour? Oh, red makes you go faster. So that's the story. Yeah. Okay. The red makes. So you, it, this is a true digital transformation experience, though. You're you're following. Um, like an e-commerce platform, you, you're having your products are ordered online, you've got a return policy, all the bits are there. It's very unlike a car business. You're worrying about manufacturing here locally. You're worrying about making sure that it's a really good product. This is, it's like, a, it's a child for you, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> and and it's, an, an, and it's an adventure and it's got a lot of positive outcomes. And, um, you know, the problem we had at the start, and it was my fault, I went and saw automakers and I said, you know, get some advice. And they said, no, no, impossible in Australia, Greg. Well, you know, being a marine biologist, I probably didn't know what I couldn't do. And we built our first vehicle in March last year, you know, out of six boxes over six days. And it was a bit of a religious experience, Andrew. On the seventh day, our mechatronics engineer drove it out of the Brisbane. And here we go. So I, I know I, we are going to run out of time, so um, we, we appreciate the update on the car. I want to touch on something personal with you. Um, yeah. You're also behind Helmepa. Uh, yeah, it's Hel Hellenic Marine Environment Protection Association. You're pretty good on your research, aren't you? I, I'm, always, I, I'm always very good on my research. Um, I'm Greek background. Oh, are you really? Well, my, some yes. of my best friends are in Greece, and I've been over there a number of times. And, uh, yeah, and... Um, it's, something very, it's very dear to your, very dear to your heart, and what a lot of people may not equate with um, Greece and the Greek culture is that conservation, particularly um, of of the water and the sea and and the fish and the turtles, etc., it's very much part of the culture. It's part of our bloodstream. If we're not careful with our oceans, we, yep. we the reason we're here is because of our oceans. And you know, I helped set up Osmepa, which is a offset of the, the Greek Helmepa, the Australian Marine Environment Protection Association. And the yeah. interesting thing is it comes out of the shipping industry. And the joke nowadays is that ships, most of the ships, the members of this group, are actually cleaner than the countries. You know, our rivers are pouring yes. more than the ships. Yes, it's, look, the, it's, it's very clear that we've got a lot of work to do to undo the damage that we've done. Um, thank, thank you very much for joining us today, but thank you for the product that you're making because behind all of it, it ticks, it ticks all the boxes, Greg. It's an environmental solution. It's an energy solution. It's a price solution. It's convenience. It fits to the digital transformation plan. They need to, they need to model you and roll you out as an example of how every business should start and what it means because the legacy that you are going to leave behind, you are at the same time at the forefront of, of an industry that's about to go through massive change. And as I said in the introduction, you know, 2020, they declared the car manufacturing industry dead, but there was ACE. Thank you. And thanks for thanks your Thanks very much. Not at all. Thank Not you. at all. Bye. To everyone out there in YouTube land, thank you so much for joining us. Please press subscribe to the Piemont Studio. Thank you for making us look and sound good. To the SMEA Association, Thank you for backing us. And of course, if you have any comments, tips, tricks or stories, you can send them to me. News at smea.org.au and we're across all the socials. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Greg. Bye. Bye.